Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, we will talk about correlation um, between two random variables. We will just make some calculations um, based on certain knowledge about these random variables. I in the previous lecture, which was actually called problems number four, um, I have introduced these two random variables and I did some preliminary calculations. Um, now we will go into the covariance and correlation for these random variables. Now this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics for teenagers and uh, high school students presented on unisor.com and I do recommend you to watch it from that website because it has notes and for registered students you have um, the certain educational process you can follow which includes enrollment and taking exams. All right, so let's go to, uh, first of all, let me just repeat a little bit what I did in the previous lecture. I have introduced two random variables, C, which is taking value x1 or x2, only two values, uh, with corresponding probabilities P and 1 minus P. And variable eta, uh, which has values y1 or y2, also only two values, with corresponding probabilities. I have also um, specified the combined probability of uh, uh, xi to take x1 and eta to take y1 as some number r. Now, why do I need this probability? It's the probability of their simultaneous distribution. And that's exactly what I need if I would like to, let's say, average their product, which is part of the covariance calculations, right? Now, from this, I can obviously derive all other um, combinations. So, if the probability of C to take X1 and A to take Y1 is R, then the probability of C to take X1 and A to take Y2 combined with this probability should be the probability of C to take X1 regardless of what value A to take, right? Because these are two different events. They are non-intersecting, obviously, because y1 and y2 are two different values. But some of these two is basically um, supposed to be all the events where c takes x1 and eta doesn't really matter what it takes. So it's supposed to be equal to p, right? So by necessity this is equal to p minus r. Very similarly, probability of c to take x2 and eta to take y1 let's just think about it what is this well if this is r now this combined with this the first and the third means that eta takes y1 and c is irrelevant basically because it has either x1 or x2 we don't care which means sum of these supposed to be equal to q. So that's why this is equal q minus r. You have to subtract this. And finally, the probability of c to take x2 and a to take y2 should be equal to, okay, this plus this is the probability of c to take x2 irrelevant of eta, which means it's supposed to be 1 minus p. So this is supposed to be 1 minus p minus q plus r. So these are four combined probabilities. Um, I, can, um, I can actually write it a little bit shorter so it doesn't take as much time. Let's call it this way. P11 is equal to R, P12 is equal to uh, P minus R, P21 is equal to Q 
u minus r and p to 2 is equal to 1 minus p minus q plus r. So that's my all the combined probabilities and now we have enough information to basically calculate covariance. Now covariance is equal to uh, expectation of this minus uh, product of expectations. So in the lecture where I have introduced the covariance and correlation, I basically uh, derived this formula and if you don't remember, please refer to the to the corresponding lecture and correlation. All right? So, um, let's just calculate it. That's kind of easy. So, what is expectation of product? Well, product can take all the different values when one a random variable takes one of the values and another takes another value. So what kind of values do we have? x1, x2, uh, sorry, x1, y1, x1, y2, x2, y1, and x2, y2. There are only four combined uh, values for, for the product x by eta. And each one of those products have corresponding probability weight, which is supposed to be used when we are calculating this mathematical expectation. So it's uh, x1, y1, r plus x1, y2, p minus r plus x2, y1, q minus r and x2, y2, 1 minus p minus u plus r. Now, minus this one. So, what is the expectation of xi? Well, it's x1 times p. Plus x2 times 1 minus p. multiply by expectation of eta, which is y1 q plus y2 1 minus q. So this is a formula for our covariance. Well, the only thing is, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit long, so let's try to maybe simplify it just a little bit. Um, let's think about this way. I will try to group together um, the corresponding um, x and y. So x1, y1 contains r and from this it has minus pq. Correct? Now what else? x1, y2 we have p minus r x1, y2, it's p minus pq. So it's minus p plus pq. Plus. Uh, x2, y1, x2, y1, we have q minus r, and x2, y1, it's 1 minus p times q, which is q minus pr, minus q plus pr, uh, plus pq. And the last one, x2, y2, we have 1 minus p minus q plus r from here, and from here we have 1 minus p times 1 minus q, which is minus 1, plus uh, p plus q minus pq equals um, p q 
P and Q and 1. So that's quite convenient. We have R minus PQ and this is minus R plus PQ. This is again minus plus R and PQ and here is plus R minus PQ. So it's very symmetrical. Basically R minus PQ we can factor out. So what will be inside? It would be x1, y1, which is this one. Now this would be with a minus sign, minus x1, y2. This also will be with a minus sign, because it's minus r plus pq, right? So it will be minus x2, y1, and this will be with a plus sign. Equals r minus pq. Now this is also, look, it's x1 times y1 minus y2 minus x2 times y1 minus so it's basically x1 minus x2 times y1 minus y2 such a relatively symmetrical and compact expression for covariance okay so let's just remember this so that's the covariance I will put it here This is our covariance. R minus PQ times X1 minus X2 times Y1 minus Y2. That's quite an interesting, by the way, covariance, because already from this we see a confirmation that if our variables are independent from each other, now, independent means that the probability of them taking some combined value, one is equal to one value and another is equal to another value, equals to the, prob uh, to the product of their probabilities, right? Remember this. So, the probability for an independent variable of C to take X1 and for eta to take Y1 is supposed to be equal to times probability of a to take y1 which is what? this is p and this is q and this is this we have decided in the very beginning as r, right? so if r is equal to pq for independent variables, then this thing is equal to zero. So covariance is equal to zero according to this formula. We just have a, a confirmation. I mean, we did have it in, in some general case, but this just confirms that our calculations are not incorrect. I'm not saying correct. I'm saying not incorrect. Because if it's not equal to zero in this particular case, that means we made a mistake. So we didn't make a mistake. All right, so that's our um, covariance. Now, if you remember, our purpose was actually to introduce correlation coefficient, which is between one, minus 1 and 1, and it signifies the level of dependency with zero means um, for independent variables, and for ultimately dependent variables, it's 1 or minus 1, depending on whether they move to the same direction or opposite direction. And everything else, partial dependency should be somewhere between minus 1 and 1. And if you remember, our correlation coefficient, which we have marked with R, was a covariance between them divided by square root of the product of their variances. Okay? Now, um, we did calculate the variance in the previous lecture. Um, it's uh, relatively easy, and uh, I will do it again right now. The variance of this one is equal to 
um, expectation of its square minus oops, square of its ex expectation. So that's expectation of a square is what? x1 square p plus x2 square 1 minus p minus a uh, square of expectation is x1 p plus x2 1 minus p square. That's what it is, right? Equals 2, let's just open the parentheses, x1 square p plus x2 square minus x2 square p minus square of this one, which is x1 square p square, um, then minus 2 x1 x2 uh, 1 minus p and p and minus x2 square and 1 minus p square which is this equals Whew. Um, okay I hope I didn't make a mistake alright x2 square I see this and I see this x minus x2 square times 1 okay that's good um, what else so x1 square we have p minus p square and that's it now um, x2 square it's plus 2p you see minus it minus it's plus 2p x2, x2 square and this is minus so I will have plus x2 square p and minus p square which is this one so we have covered this and what else that's the only thing is minus 2 x1 x2 uh, p and 1 minus p equals well p minus p square is the same as p minus p times 1 minus p right so it's p times 1 minus p and uh, here I will have x1 square minus 2x1 x2 plus x2 square which is x1 minus x2 square uh, sorry square is outside of the parentheses so, that's what we have to put here. It's square root of x1 minus x2 square p and 1 minus p. And the same thing for eta, which is y1 minus y2 square. Same thing, right? q and 1 minus q. So all we need right now is just to simplify this formula as much as possible. Now here I will also take whatever we have here, the covariance, which is this. Now, what's interesting, by the way, you see x1 minus x2 and this is square root of x1 minus 2 square and the same thing with y so it's tempting just to cancel them out right because this is square root of a square right well that's not exactly the right way to do because this can be positive or negative depending on their comparison 
and this can be always positive because this is the absolute value square root square root of a square is absolute value of a right because square root always without plus minus sign it it, it assumed arithmetic value which is only the positive part so it's not just we simple um, um, factor it out what we will do we will actually do it differently we will put uh, something which I basically designate as number k now k is either plus 1 or minus 1 k is equal plus 1 or minus 1 depending on sign of this product that's what it is right so let's just remember this so this is k which is plus one or minus one depending on then we can basically get rid of this uh, x1 and x2 so it will be only r minus pq divided by square root of uh, p1 minus p q one minus q so we can't really simplify it any further it's simple enough now here we see basically dependence of the correlation coefficient from their individual probabilities and parameter which signifies the mutual the, the, the simultaneous taking certain value the mutual distribution of values of uh, variables C and, and, and eta. So this is the coefficient of correlation. Let's just again think about this. Obviously, if independent uh, uh, variables are given, then it's equal to zero because R is equal to PQ. R is basically the probability of C to take uh, X1 and, uh, and eta to take Y1 simultaneously. But if they are independent, it's equal to probability of one times probability of another, which is p times q. So for independent variables, that seems to be correct. Now, let's think about what will be uh, in case when c is equal to eta. What does it mean? Well, first of all, it means that x1 is equal to y1 and x2 is equal to y2. They're exactly the same, right? Um, but what it also means that whenever C takes X1, uh, eta inevitably takes the same uh, value, X1, which is equal to Y1, right? So that means that um, what it means in terms of R, where R is supposed to be uh, equal to Let's just think again. What's the probability of C to take um, X1 simultaneously uh, eta to take also value X1? Well, if they are completely dependent, then it's exactly the same as the probability of C to take X1, right? Which is P. So my P11 is equal to P, my P12 is equal to 0, right? The probability of C to take X1 and eta to take uh, X2, which is equal to Y2, is 0 because they are never on the different values, they're always the same. And P1 P21 is equal to 0 for the same reason, and P22 is equal to uh, P, right? So what do we have here in this case? Well, P and Q are the same right now. So I will have um, R, which is P, minus P square divided by... Now, this is the same as this, right? P and Q are the same. So square root would be P times 1 minus P. Now this is also P times 1 minus P. So this is equal to 1. So the correlation is equal to 1 in this case. 
as is supposed to be. So basically it does make sense, this formula. By the way, if I will do uh, differently, if I will do in opposite uh, direction, then I will have minus 1 here, for obvious reasons. So that's why k is, k k k is uh, either plus 1 or minus 1. So that's basically um, the problem, that, that's all the problem. Our uh, correlation coefficient has been calculated, and you just have the feeling how it's calculated. Now, in this case, we are with, within the theory of probabilities, when all these numbers are given to us. Practically, it's all for statistical purposes, because we don't really know the probabilities. We do know statistics, we, know the, we have the sample data, etc. And that's why what's important is to calculate our correlation coefficient based on statistical purposes and then see how close it is to zero or to one or something in between or to minus one because that actually gives us the very good picture of how two uh, uh, random variables related to, to, to each other. And the perfect example, and I mentioned it in the previous lecture, is um, the drug uh, and, and some illness which is this drug is supposed to treat. So the effect of the drug uh, on, on the effectiveness of the treatment can be statistically evaluated because we have basically statistics, we give so much um, this particular drug and we have these particular results. Question is whether they're related or not. If the correlation between giving the drug and effectiveness of the treatment is very close to zero, it means, well, the drug is basically useless. If correlation is closer to one, obviously it means that the drug is effective. So that's where we have to make a judgment how much positive correlation we consider sufficient to recognize this drug as an effective treatment of that particular illness. But that would be a purpose of our statistical discussions in a different lecture. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much and good luck. <laughs>